Minister of Finance gives elucidation on the ROV pension increase from 62 to 65 years. Member of the Anti-Poverty Platform wants government to wake up and help them out. And Tropical Depression number 13 becomes Tropical Storm Laura. Those are the headlines for Friday viewers, August the 21st, 2020. Good evening, everyone. This is SXM Daily News. I am Valerie Van Putten. Thank you for joining me this evening. And as usual, we have a packed newscast, so let's get started. In our first story for this evening, Tropical Depression Number 13 becomes Tropical Storm Laura. A tropical storm warning is currently in effect for St. Martin, and it is expected to reach the island this evening around midnight. Forecaster at the Met Office, Desiree Carter, speaking to our news department, gave the latest coordinates for Tropical Storm Laura. St. Martin is currently under a Tropical Storm warning, seeing that Tropical Depression number 13 developed into Tropical Storm Laura uh, around mid-morning. And it is now forecast to pass a bit closer to us, about... Um, 35 miles to our south, southwest, around midnight or so, just after midnight tonight. Now, that's the central point that is passing close to us. And, of course, we have the outer bands that can be felt before and after that. So we are already experiencing some of those showers, and we can experience even more showers and thunderstorms and perhaps even flooding by this, after, this evening into tonight and tomorrow morning. Besides that, we can expect um, storm force winds of 45 miles per hour with higher gusts and rough seas due to those winds as well, up to 10 feet, um, from this afternoon through Saturday. So we are advising everyone to be as cautious as possible, especially when um, going home from work this afternoon, and to get off the roads as early as possible. And... Um, just sit tight until the storm has passed. How many days will the storm take before it completely passes? It will be affecting us from this evening into tomorrow. So as it is right now, if nothing really changes, it should be out of our area by Sunday, um, by midday or so on Sunday. We should be clear of this system. It is currently a tropical storm, and it is expected to strengthen, but on a gradual strengthening curve. And there is a slight possibility that it can become a hurricane, but by that point, it will be out of our area. And it will be heading to the, the U.S. by early next week. The best advice I can give is to stay off the roads, number one, due to the flooding. And number two, I would say to clear out any potential flying debris out of your yards, any um, lighter objects, so um, maybe small plants or small furniture that is on your porch or in your yard area, and get those cleared out and possibly bring them inside or put them in a garage or storage area. Um, because we are expecting these storm force winds and it can have higher gusts. So those are just a, a bit of precautionary measures that can be taken. And it's not that it's a hurricane that we are expecting, but we can get strong gusty winds. And the Tropical Depression 13 has strengthened and is now Tropical Storm Laura. And this marks the 12th named storm of the 2020 Atlantic hurricane season. Maximum sustained winds have been recorded at around 45 miles per hour. According to the managing board of the Princess Juliana International Airport Operating Company, MV, PJIAE, the aerodrome was closed for operations on Friday, August the 21st, 2020 at 5 p.m. due to the latest weather forecast. Operations are scheduled to resume at 7 a.m. on Saturday. This time will facilitate the landing and departure of all scheduled flights for today. A NOTAM was also issued to all airmen, confirmed the Chief Operations Officer of the airport, the COO, Mr. Michel Hyman. They are asking you to visit their web page for full flight information 
and schedule or contact your flight operator for any adjustments to your flight itinerary. Continue to monitor a credible weather source for the latest update and remain safe. And in other news, Minister of Finance, the Honorable Ardwell Irion, speaking at the Council of Ministers weekly press briefing on Wednesday last, August the 19th, 2020, elucidated on the AOV general old age pension increase from 62 to 65 years. The minister says that it has been approved on July the 15th by Parliament and adopted by the governor on August 11th and was published in the National Gazette on August the 12th. He expounds more. The AOV, the general old age pension, the increase of the age from 62 to 65 approved on July 15th by Parliament and adopted by the governor on August 11th and published in the National Gazette on August 12th. At the time that advice was made by the CFT, it had not been published and consequently not determined to be completed as per required condition of the second tranche. These reforms will lead to a savings for the 2020 budget and to a cost saving of the salaries and benefits package for the government officials. In other words, the enforcement of these reforms will affect the working conditions of the public servants and will lead to a savings in the 2020 budget. Not counting these reforms will further complicate the successful conclusion. Oh, sorry. Yes. Not counting these reforms will further complicate the successful conclusion of the negotiations with the unions and the acceptance of the 12.5% reduction in employment conditions package. The 12.5% the 12 annual reduction of the salary and benefits package of civil servants and workers in the semi-public sector is financed for at least 50% by government until further notice and CFT would also like to see that no, indexion, no indexation will be applied either until further notice. St. So Martin presented a document in which it described the application of these conditions. It was mentioned for reduction of vacation allowance. In addition to that, additional expenses on trainings, uniform, meals, travel expenses were also included as part of the package. Additionally, we also included the reduction of the pension premium. CFT has indicated that these two items are not to be considered of part of the reduction of 12.5% 12, 12 as they stem from a previous Kingdom Council of Ministers meeting, instructions in 2015 and 2016. I'll also like to mention that the legislative trajectories have started but not yet completed and there are still negotiations with the civil service unions that have not yet been concluded. As such, there are no formal decisions with the unions. Given all what was said above, the CFT therefore concluded that St. Martin has not yet complied with the 12.5% reduction. Another condition was the maximizing of the salary and benefits at 130%, which we call the Jacobs norm from the government-owned companies and entities for the semi-public also, which are financed by 50%. The same is also for valid for, cons for consultants. The calculation was made, which was submitted. It also included the reduction of the pension premium and such the conditions is considered not completed. St. Martin, is of the, St. Martin is of the opinion that these implementing reforms should form part of the reductions, particularly the 12.5% reduction in terms of employment packages, and the CFT does not think so, and therefore assumes a total discount of 20.5%. The CFT does not judge with due regard to the local context, as, I've, as I have mentioned before in a previous letter sent to them. In that case, the discussions with CFT are, to say the least, complicated. This difference of opinion leads, among, leads to, among other things, to the fact that St. Martin is of the opinion that it meets the conditions set for the second tranche, while the CFT cannot determine this. And still to come, 
EZV implements new software for upgrade and migration to a new system. And I'll have the details of that story when SXM Daily News returns. GEBE has been faithfully serving the communities of St. Martin, powering your home and our economy. Come rain or shine, our qualified team of professionals are working hard 24 hours a day to provide you and your family with safe, reliable electricity and water. We use the latest technologies and test our products daily to maintain the highest international standards. Our friendly staff is always there to assist you, whether in person, over the phone, or online. We are committed to constantly improving our products and services, making them more efficient, effective, and environmentally friendly to serve you better today and our next generation of clients tomorrow. GEBE, -E, powering a brighter future. Our friend Mega Wadi is here with tips to save you energy. One, turn your air code temperature up. Two, use a ceiling fan instead. Three, buy energy saving products. Save some green with NVGEBE. -E. Welcome back, viewers. And as we continue now with more news for you at this time, member of the anti-poverty platform, Dr. Randos Raymond Jisirun, wants government to wake up and help them out. Mr. Jisirun gave some elucidation of the ministerial decree of April the 4th, 2020, on the temporary payroll support. So, members of Parliament, please wake up and help us out. When we read the elucidation with the ministerial decrees concerning the temporary payroll support. The only legislation mentioned as basis for the ministerial decree, AB 2020 number 29, was the national decree of April the 4th, 2020, number 2020-0314, which decreed the state of emergency which was prolonged by national decree of April 18th and of May the 10th. The national ordinance, execution organ social and health insurances, and the national ordinance, the budget of 2020. Based on which law, companies or employers can get a subsidy from government for operational or personal costs of their company. Which national ordinance authorizes the Minister of Finance and the Minister of VESA to provide a government subsidy to employers or businesses for operational loss or for a contribution in the payroll support? If this national ordinance exists, which articles provide the Minister of Finance and the Minister of VSA the authority to come with a ministerial decree. Parliament has adopted a general subsidy ordinance, and that is regulated in AB 2013, GT number 38, for St. Martin. But nowhere in the elucidation of the ministerial decrees for the payroll support for the companies or the employers, this general subsidy ordinance is mentioned. Now let us see if the employers and businesses can apply for payroll support, payroll support subsidy from government based on this general subsidy ordinance. The payroll support applications can be considered as incidental subsidy request for specific months, month of April, the month of May, the month of June. Well, Article 8 of the Subsidy Ordinance of St. Martin states and stipulates that the requirements for an entity to apply for subsidy are the following. In paragraph 1 of this article, the entity must be a legal entity founded by a notarial deed and registered in the public registers of the Chamber of Commerce. 
Companies such as limited liability companies, foundations, in other words, could qualify, but a sole proprietor could not. In the fourth paragraph, Article 8, there it is stipulated that the workers of the entity should be represented in the board of the entity, or at least there must have been a participation in policy making of the entity. In which company that applied for payroll support, workers have this democratic right to have a say in that entity. Article 8, the sixth paragraph, stipulates that the entity should not have making profit as an objective. Hello. Which of the companies that have applied for the payroll support do not strive for profit? In Article 12, it specified the procedure to request an incidental subsidy. That application must be done in writing to the minister at least two months before the activity for which the subsidy is requested. What do we see? All applications for payroll support subsidy are being entered via an SFV employer's portal more than a month after the employees were already paid. And the management of SFV informed the public that the pension department will not be available from Friday, August the 21st to Monday, August the 31st, due to software upgrade and migration to a new system. As of September the 1st, 2020, requests will be processed and responses provided. As a consequence thereof, they will not be able to respond to incoming requests by email or phone during this period. Some pensioners will have a delay in receiving their pension payments by the end of August or the beginning of September due to the late processing of their life certificate. These persons will receive their payment retroactively by the end of September 2020. The management of SFV would like to thank the public in advance for your understanding and apologize for the inconvenience caused. Now, turning to our weather forecast for August the 21st, 2020, conditions are expected to gradually deteriorate from the evening as Tropical Storm Laura approaches the island. Tropical storm conditions are likely to begin from this evening. As a result of deteriorating sea conditions, waves are expected to peak up to 8 feet during this forecast period. A small craft advisory was issued earlier today. Residents in some prone areas of flooding or near the coast should finalize preparations to protect life and property. Meanwhile, small craft operators and sea bathers should exercise extreme caution. The outlook through Sunday midday, cloudy to overcast, breezy with isolated showers possible. Now, let's turn to your three-day forecast. And still to come, police on St. Martin asking for assistance in finding missing person. We'll have the details of that story and more when SFM Daily News returns. Make use of web mobile banking with easy access and direct usage of face recognition. PIN code. Or fingerprint. Download WID Mobile Banking app and make your transaction from anywhere at any time. For more information, visit wib banknet forward slash quick dash login. And welcome back, viewers. In more news for you at this time, recovered COVID 19 patient Clarence Derby submitted a heartfelt video to the staff expressing his gratitude for the care he received at the St. Martin Medical Center and from colleagues at the Ambulance Department and Collective Prevention Services, CPS.
The staff wish him good health and continued recovery. Good evening. My name is Clarence Derby. I'm, I'm a COVID-19 survivor. As a matter of fact, I got out of the hospital just last night. I was taken to the hospital because I had breathing issues. I could not breathe without breathing aids, so I had to be taken in to be put in on oxygen, the oxygen therapy, they call it, so that I can breathe. I would like to thank all the people who are instrumental in getting me there and of course, eventually back. The people from CPS who came and did the tests, Mr. DeCober and the other wonderful lady, I forget her name. To the people in the ambulance who came and got me to the hospital in record time. I think I'm more scared, I was more scared in the ambulance than of the COVID, but they were wonderful. They got me there to the people who received me at the container, the people who took me back for my x-rays, etc. And then eventually I got to my award. But this video is not to talk about my getting COVID and getting over it. This video is really to express the appreciation of all of the people who have been instrumental, especially the people in the ward who get all dressed up to come into that sterile area to take care of us several times of the day. They come and they clean and they take our vitals and make our beds and do all the other things with a smile on their face all the time. They always walk in and say, hi, morning. How are you this morning? How are you feeling? How you slept last night? And the reason I'm mentioning this is because too often we criticize situation where we do not feel that people step up to the plate in order to give us that level of service that we deserve. I mean, deservingly so, but that's so often those just isolated situations where you have one bad apple that spoils the whole thing. But the thing is we are never quick to give our um, praise and dwarf appreciation for all of the good things that the other people do. And I see these people come in early in the morning and they do what they have to do. Leaving the family at home, coming to a sterile area and then going back home to their family. I would like to just thank everyone, from the doctors, the nurses, the people at CPS. I would like to thank all of the people, the frontline people, the backline people, the people in the kitchen that prepare our meals every day. We are three meals a day, every day. The people who clean, the administration people, the security guard to make sure that no one came into our area. Everyone who had anything to do with this. I don't think that your people really realize what goes on at the St. Martin Medical Center. And I think those people should be given credit and they do not give enough credit for what they're doing, especially now the situation that they're dealing with. It is stressful enough working in a normal situation, to, but to be working with this disease, I just can imagine how they can deal with that. I cannot imagine how they can deal with that psychologically. And I think that everybody, everybody should try to appreciate what they do and let them know in some way, shape or form, let them know that we appreciate them. Yeah. I want to thank everyone. And the last thing I want to say is that I think I have been successful because I have always taken care of my body. I've always exercised. I've always eaten properly. I've never stopped. 
exercising. Never ever have I stopped in my life. And I realize that my success of recovery was as a result of the shape I am in. And in more news at this time, on Wednesday, August 19th, 2020, a report of a missing person was filed at the Phillipsburg Police Station by the husband of Arina Klehuna, who was born in Russia on the 26th of March, 1990. Arina Klehuna, who is a Canadian citizen, was last seen on August 17th, 2020, stepping into a vehicle with two unknown persons in the French cul-de-sac area. Arena has a tattoo of a water lily on her feet with the wording carpe diem around it. She also has a tattoo in the form of a heart on her left arm. There has been no information on the whereabouts of Arena Klehuna, and she has not returned home nor contacted her husband or any other family member. The police department is seeking the assistance from the community to help locate Arena. If anyone has information about the whereabouts of Arena, please contact her husband, Mr. Rutger Patrick, at the phone number 1721-523-2221. That's 523-2221. You can also contact the police force of St. Martin at telephone number 542-2222, extension 106, or the emergency number 911. And still to come, Stockel, new commander of the Cutter Jaguar. And I'll have the details of that story with SXM Daily News Report. Welcome back, viewers. And as we end this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening, Stockel is the new commander of the Dutch Caribbean Coast Guard Cutter Jaguar. Stockel is the first local from Curaçao to sail on the Jaguar as commander. He started his career with the Coast Guard after he was transferred from the Antillean militia, now the Caribbean militia, to the Coast Guard. He started as a fleet operator on board of the P-boats and the inshore boats. When introducing the Cutter, he stepped on board of the Cutter Jaguar as a sailor, and in 2003, he was placed on board of the Cutter Puma in St. Martin for three years as assistant chief deck. In 2010, he returned to Curaçao and rejoined the Cutter Jaguar in the position of second wacht officer and a few years later, he became the first Wacht Officer. He flew regularly to St. Martin to sail on the Puma as the first Wacht Officer there. For Stockel, St. Martin is his second home. Mr. Stockel took over the command from Mr. Van Roosmalen, and Mr. Roosmalen was commander of the Cutter Jaguar between 2017 to 2020. Van Roosmalen is going for a different challenge within the Coast Guard organization. During the ceremony, Van Roosmalen thanked the Jaguar crew for the great cooperation and wished Stockel and the team the best of luck together. The release reads in part. And with that, viewers, brings us to the end of this edition of SXM Daily News for this evening. I am Valerie Van Putten, thanking you so much for joining me. And just a reminder that this and other programs are available online. Simply log on to stmartinmediacenter.com for viewing. And on behalf of the SXM Daily News team, we thank you for watching and plan on meeting you right back here again on Monday. Please stay safe and be careful.